that feels good. You guys ever just wiggle your shifter? <laughs> How is it going guys? We are changing things up today. We're gonna be working on the 22 GR86 behind me. Bill at Works has sent us this nice little care package here. So let's open this up and see what's inside. We'll start with the long box here. This is the Billet Works short shifter. We got it in a nice matte black finish, but the reverse lockout on this is available in a bunch of different finishes from Billet Works. Uh, so if you're a little bit more flashy than I am, you can go with something a little bit different than the matte black. But this is gonna shorten our uh, throws by 30% and give us that nice notchy feeling when we're shifting. I'm really excited to get that in the car. Go on to this next one here. Ooh, we've got a new shift knob. This is, I believe their fusion shift knob. Nice engraving up top here. And then an Alcantara suede cover on the outside. Got some really good weight to it. I think this is uh, about 500 grams if I remember correctly. That'll go perfectly with the short shifter. And then last but not least, this looks to be the e-brake handle. Yeah, so we've got a matte black e-brake handle to match up with the shift knob and the matte black reverse lockout. And it also comes with a e-brake button as well to finish off the whole set. All right, let's head over to the car and uh, work on getting the OEM one out. And then we'll start with the short shifter first. I'm actually pretty excited about this because we just got back from a trip about 1500 miles or so. And honestly, the stock shifter in this car isn't all that bad. So I'm curious to see how much better the billet work shifter is gonna feel. But first things first, we need to get this center console out of the way. On both sides of the center console, you're gonna see these small plastic covers here. You may need to slide your seat all the way back and lean it back, but we're gonna pry these off with a small plastic pry tool or a flathead screwdriver and that's gonna give us access to the 10 millimeter bolt inside that we'll remove on both sides. E-brake boot is gonna come off next. We just need to grab the bottom edge and pull straight up. And then we'll slide this over the e-brake handle and set it aside. We'll unscrew the shift knob while we're at it. Now we need to remove this plastic cover underneath the climate control switches with our trim removal tool again. Mine has this little hook here that makes it super easy to get in on the corners right under the switches and pry this straight out. If you don't have one with this curved hook, you can put a little piece of tape on the edges here and then pry from the edges. Just be careful that you're not scratching up the shifter trim. That's gonna reveal two Phillips head screws that we need to remove. To remove the shifter trim, we're gonna pull up on this corner and work our way around the edges. And then we'll pull towards the back of the car once we get to this portion and it'll pop right out. We're gonna do the same thing with the shift boot now, pull straight up. and then slide the boot over the lockout. That gives us access to these two Phillips head screws that we'll remove. That is gonna free up the rear portion of the center console so we can pull up on the front side of it to pop it loose, as well as the back. And then we'll just slide it back a little bit and out of the way like so. We've got these two connectors that we're gonna disconnect. There's two more Phillips head screws that we'll remove. Then we'll need to carefully separate these two pieces that are joined right here. There's two tabs, one on the top and one on the bottom that'll need to be depressed. 
and it'll come apart just like that. With those pieces separated, we're gonna take the driver's side one, pull it straight back. We'll set that aside. We're gonna do the same thing on the passenger side, but because this side has the connector tab here, we're just gonna put it off to the side and out of the way. There's gonna be two white plastic retaining nuts that you can just unscrew by hand. Now we can take this rubber boot and isolator and pull it up over the reverse lockout. That gives us access to the three 10 millimeter bolts that are holding the lockout plate and the shifter in place. So go ahead and remove those. We'll move on to the four 12 millimeter bolts that are holding this plate in place. There's also gonna be a tab that's holding these harnesses in place. You just need to pinch the top and bottom to release that. And then we'll slide this over the top of the shifter. And now we need to go underneath the car. Underneath the car, we're gonna be looking for this rubber boot here that covers the connection from the shifter to the shift linkage down here. We need to pull this boot back to reveal the snap ring over on the driver's side. Now, I was blessed with these small hands that fit up in here that allow me to do this uh, with just my hands, but you may need to use a flathead screwdriver or some sort of pick tool uh, to pull this back to reveal that snap ring. We're gonna remove that snap ring with some snap ring pliers. There's also gonna be a washer that we need to take off. Don't forget that. And now we can slide the linkage out of the shifter and go back up top. With the linkage disconnected, we can pull the shifter straight up and out of the car. There's a couple things that we need to transfer over from the stock shifter to the new billet work shifter. We've got the two rubber boots here uh, underneath this rubber boot. There's also two uh, plastic washers that need to be transferred over. We've got this white piece uh, over the ball joint and then the metal mounting bracket. I'm gonna start with the rubber boots first. I'm gonna use a small flathead screwdriver for these plastic pieces. I'm gonna put some gloves on because it's gonna get a little bit greasy, but there's another snap ring right here that's holding uh, the reverse lockout in place. Um, when you're taking this snap ring off, there is a spring in here that's gonna want to shoot out. So I'm gonna put my thumb and index finger on here to kind of hold it in place so that it doesn't just shoot out and go wherever it wants. And now we can slide the lockout off. The plate's gonna come off. And then we can pop this white plastic piece off. We also need to disassemble the billet work shifter a bit. So we're gonna use a 3 seconds Allen for the reverse lockout. And then there's gonna be a 764 screw for the bottom of the reverse lockout here. Pay attention to the orientation. You can see that this lobe is pointed the, straight, uh, the same way as the bottom portion here. So remember that when you put this back. And then again, there's gonna be a snap ring holding the spring in place for the Lock out. Go 
We're gonna put a small amount of grease on this ball joint here. And then also over the area where the reverse lockout is gonna go. Don't go too crazy with this. You don't need a huge amount. And now we can start piecing this back together. We'll start with the white plastic piece. That'll pop on. Slide this piece back on. And we'll get the reverse lockout slid on. Again, pay attention to the lobe. Those are both pointed the same way. Slide the spring on. Get the snap ring back on. And then we'll take the Allen and line that up with the hole. Just hand tighten that for now. And we'll come back with the Allen key. We'll slide the reverse lockout on. Tighten down those two screws. Don't forget these two plastic pieces here. Then we've got the rubber boots. And I'm gonna slide this all the way over to reveal this section because we're gonna need uh, to put the linkage back in and I don't wanna have to pull the boot away when we're under the car. Make sure to wipe everything down so there's no grease on your lockout and such. Once everything's clean, we'll head over to the car. Back inside the car, we can slide the shifter into place. Careful with the boot so you don't rip it. And pay attention to the orientation of your reverse lockout. You want it pointed towards the driver's side. There we go. Now we can take the lockout plate and the three bolts and get those loosely fitted on here. Then we're gonna go back underneath the car to connect the shifter. Back underneath the car, we can slide the linkage into the new shifter. And then we need to get the washer back on and the snap ring. Once that snap ring's on, we'll need to pull the boot back over the linkage. All right, now we can go back up top. Next thing we need to do is adjust this reverse lockout place. So carefully put it into first. Make sure you're not trying to go into reverse because without this, you may go all the way over to the left and you won't be able to get into gear. Once you're in first, slide that lockout plate over and then wiggle the shifter just a little bit to give yourself a tiny bit of leeway there. And then we're gonna snug these bolts down. Before I do that last one, I'm gonna check to make sure I can get in a second. That's all good. So we'll tighten down the last bolt. And we'll double check again, going first, second, reverse. All right. I'm gonna make a dangerous assumption here and assume that if you've gotten this far, you know how to put everything back together. I don't think I need to babysit you. I trust you and I believe in you, so I'm gonna get everything put back together real quick so that we can jump to the shift knob and e-brake handle, and then we'll take this thing out for a spin. Center console is put back together besides the e-brake boot so that we can do the e-brake handle, but we're gonna jump to the shift knob first. It's gonna come with an insert and jam nut. Thread the jam nut onto the shifter first. And go all the way down. Make sure that you can still engage the reverse lockout. And then thread on the insert. Now we're gonna lock these two together using a 19 and 17 millimeter wrench. Once those are snug, we'll take our fusion shift knob here. 
and we're gonna thread that on. It's likely not going to be, wow, okay. That worked out perfectly actually the first try. That usually doesn't happen, but the shift knob is perfectly aligned now. If your shift knob happens to be clocked wrong like this, you're gonna take it back off and then you just undo the jam nut and the insert, adjust the insert a little bit and then lock it again with the jam nut and then reinstall the shift knob until you get the orientation correct. But uh, I guess I got lucky this time, so we're gonna put the shift knob back on. There we go. Ooh, that, that feels good. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to actually drive this. Last but not least, we have the e-brake handle. This is just glued in place, so what we need to do is grab it with both hands, and we're gonna twist to break free the glue. Uh, this is your chance to comment down below with uh, all your dick jokes, you know? Oh God, okay, I think I got it. Ugh. Okay, as for the shift button, I, mean, I might need to grab some pliers for this. I don't wanna ruin this e-brake button, so I've got a little bit of hosing here that I'll wrap around. And I'll use some channel locks to break that free. The new e-brake handle is gonna slide into place. And we're gonna use a 564 Allen key to tighten these set screws. And then the new e-brake button will thread on. We'll take the e-brake boot, slide that over. Pop it back into place. And then we'll slide this down to right there. And we are set. driven a couple blocks but I can instantly tell that the throws are significantly shorter and it's a hell of a lot notchier than the stock shifter which I really enjoy and when we pair that up with the weighted fusion shift knob that we installed this thing feels absolutely fantastic which I'm kind of surprised because like I said I'm actually a big fan of how the stock shifter feels in this car but this I've got to say is a big upgrade. It's such a big part of the driving experience, right? You always touch the shifter when you drive the car and this is going to put a smile on your face once you get it installed and go out for a drive. There's also no denying that the matte black finish looks sexy as hell in this car and the Alcantara or suede on that fusion shift knob is a match made in heaven for the premium seats in this GR86. Now, if only I could find a GR86 of my own to install this in. There's no luck so far, but I've got a couple deposits down and we'll see what happens. I'm actually kind of jealous because I love how that shifter feels and I want the FRS to feel like that. I've got to get in touch with Billowworks to see what they can do for the FRS. Huge shout out to Austin over there for getting us the shift knob, short throw shifter, e-brake handle and button. They look astonishing in the car and they feel even better. If you guys want to pick up something for it yourself, the links are down in the description. They have a ton of different options. You don't have to be born like me and just go with matte black, but hey, it looks pretty damn good in the car. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Thank you.